Senator Jeff Flake of Arizona at the Capitol. On Tuesday, he announced that he would not seek re-election next year. Al Dragoo, New York Times Senator Jeff Flake is a conservative Republican from Arizona. I'm a Democrat from Delaware. We have opposed each other on nearly every vote for as long as we've served in the Senate. So his announcement on Tuesday that he won't seek re-election in 2018 should be great news for me. That's one way to look at it. The senator is nothing more than my political opponent, someone whose loss is my gain. But that's not at all how I see things. I may disagree with Mr. Flake on policy, but I consider him an honorable man, a loyal friend and a valued colleague. His retirement is deeply troubling to me because he represents a principled and patriotic Republican Party, one that has long championed strong American leadership around the world, and one I now fear is falling apart. That should scare all Americans. It sure scares me. How did Mr. Flake, who served in Congress since 2003 and has been in the Senate since 2013, become such an outsider in his own party that he would NT seek re-election after only one term over the past year? Right-wing populists have mocked his principled independence, donors have funded his primary opponent and President Trump, hardly a conservative and only recently a Republican, has openly wished for his defeat. This has been Mr. Flake's punishment for charting his own course on issues such as immigration reform and for having the courage to stand up to Mr. Trump, first as a candidate and now as president. His loyalty to the Republican Party, to his conservative principles and to his deep sense of right and wrong never wavered, which is why he refused to be silent when he believed the president was wrong. This situation didnt come out of nowhere. Over the past few decades, our political culture has corroded. Traditions of compromise and civility have given way to a zero-sum, winner-take-all approach that is now out of control. As Mr. Flake said on the Senate floor Tuesday, anger and resentment are not a governing philosophy. Unfortunately, Jeff Flake is only the latest example of a Republican whose willingness to speak out against his party's current standard-bearer has cost him politically. The president has spent weeks impugning Bob Corker, the Tennessee Republican who heads the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, for pointing out that Mr. Trump is debasing the nation. Mr. Trump, as a candidate and as president, has also repeatedly and viciously attacked Senator John McCain, a war hero who has sacrificed more for the United States than most of us can even imagine. Republican leaders have offered occasional defenses of their colleagues from these attacks. Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader, called Mr. Flake a very fine man of high principles on Tuesday. But they have largely remained on the sidelines as Mr. Trump and his allies have attacked those few Republicans who have dared to call for civility and compromise. The consequences of this could be grave. If the Republican Party under Donald Trump has no room for independent-minded conservatives, and if, in the coming years, senators like Jeff Flake and Bob Corker are replaced by fringe conservatives handpicked because of their blind loyalty to this president, it will be too late for responsible conservatives to salvage the party they've built over generations. As a member of the Foreign Relations Committee, I'm particularly worried by the prospect of Mr. Trump's narrow, nationalist America First foreign policy replacing the vision of lawmakers like Mr. McCain, Mr. Corker and Mr. Flake who have pushed for strong American global leadership based on human rights, the rule of law and strong international agreements. I sincerely hope that Republican leaders recognize this before it's too late. As for Democrats, there should be no sense of satisfaction in what is happening to the Republican Party. The balance of two functioning political parties has been essential to our country's success. In fact, we should take this moment to look at ourselves in the mirror and ask how much do our own party's internal battles resemble the fight happening within the Republican Party as Democrats call for independence and pragmatism from Republicans. We should be asking ourselves how tolerant we are of dissent within our own party and how much we are really willing to reach across the aisle. Senator Flake finished his remarks on the Senate floor on Tuesday by quoting Abraham Lincoln, who reminded Americans on the eve of the Civil War that we are not enemies but friends and though passion may have strained it must not break our bonds of affection. Mr. Flake wisely warned Republicans and Democrats that our bonds are dangerously strained. Now is the time to ensure they don't break. In a closely divided Senate, three of my Republican colleagues have made risky, unpopular decisions to speak out about the precarious state of their party and the country. We should heed their warnings, challenge them to turn the words into action and ask how we can do the same. Chris Coons at Chris Coons is a Democratic senator from Delaware.
A version of this opt appears in print on October 26, 2017, on page A29 of the New York edition with the headline Jeff Flake's exit should scare Democrats.